Galahad, come in. Galahad, acknowledge this is command. I read you, Percival. Enjoying a stroll in the park, are we? Nothing quite like a chilly London morning to stimulate the senses. Not to interrupt your little constitutional, but we have confirmation that multiple marks of Grosvenor Square. What are our directives? From the time we first saw it, we were intrigued by the potential of the Order 1886, more than ready to take to the streets of Victorian London, hunting monsters with centuries-old knights carrying fantastical technology. Yet the final product has us feeling acutely divided, somehow simultaneously amazed and discontent, with the first entry of this new PlayStation franchise. <laughs> For a game shouldering the introduction of this new world, the Order is surprisingly confident in its backstory. It doesn't waste time defining its lore, instead letting you piece together the history of the Knights, their roles and relationships in the context of conversations and situations as they're presented, without feeling obscure or heavy-handed. In particular, you're placed in the boots of Sir Galahad, a member of a four-man squad battling against both rebels and half-breeds. Their squad leader, Sir Percival, senses that there's more going on than meets the eye, and they follow the threads of conspiracy while attempting to walk a tightrope of political tension. You cannot deny that there is some truth to what Percival has said. The characters exhibit distinct personalities and there are hints of deeper relationships among them, but it never feels as if you fully bond with your team, and the only emotion characters elicit is a sense of empathetic frustration as their concerns fall on deaf ears. Meanwhile, the unwinding mysteries of the plot are stimulating, but just as events feel like they're about to ramp toward climax, the story takes a turn and just sort of ends, leaving loose threads hanging for a likely sequel. Oh! Hello? The whole affair lasts about seven to eight hours, and for better or worse, the game is entirely driven by its narrative. Aside from a few side rooms with alternate weapons or bits of backstory, there's little opportunity to venture off the beaten path. Plus, there are some instances where you'll simply walk for five seconds between one cutscene and the next. <laughs> Thankfully, the game is paced fairly well overall. While some chapters are extra heavy on cinemas and quick time events, others provide lengthy shootouts, let you stalk guards through stealth sections, or have you clambering across rooftops. Some of the best moments evoke a sense of horror as you shine lanterns down dark hallways, and there are other times where you can slow down and just take in the environment. From time to time along the way, you'll make use of gadgets devised by Nikola Tesla, letting you send Morse code, pick locks, or overload electrical circuits. Did Nikola provide you with armament? Yes, SXM2 Falchion. The cover-based gunplay of the Order is adequate, but doesn't really do much to stand apart. Shootouts amount to holding your ground, moving forward when you can, and picking off the most active threats, which are often shotgunners who are experts at rushing and flanking you. Cover wraps around in organic ways that keep the battlefield from feeling flat, but the cover mechanics prevent you from taking full advantage of the level designs. While there is a system to switch between cover points that are directly beside each other, there's no streamlined way to advance to cover that's in front of you, which makes things awkward at times. There's also a minor annoyance with the game's depth of field effect, which can render some of your targets blurry when you're trying to aim. Aside from various groups of soldiers, you'll have a few showdowns with lichens, which require quick reactions to dodge and take down as they dart in and out of view. However, these monster encounters don't really feel all that interesting or threatening, until you face off with a larger specimen that plays out more like cinematic knife fights from Resident Evil 4. <laughs> The black water coursing through Galahad's veins also bestows two particular benefits. First, if you go down in battle, you can take a swig to revive yourself. Then, based on your kills, you'll fill up a meter to periodically enable black sight, essentially allowing you to freeze time and blast away at anything in your line of sight. In terms of weapons, you're generally equipped with one primary weapon, a sidearm, smoke grenades, and frag grenades, each of which are either assigned to you from the start of a mission or picked up along the way. There is no persistent inventory. Guns include a fair number of variations on standard weapons, and then there are the specialties designed by Tesla for the order. One rifle fires a concussive blast of air to stun enemies before you shoot them. The arc gun lets you discharge bolts of electricity and works effectively even when blind firing, while the thermite rifle sets soldiers ablaze. Unfortunately, outside of a pair of scripted moments with the thermite rifle, these technological wonders don't really have any fun uses outside of combat. Everyone stand back. Igniting!
Where the Order 1886 excels is in the strength of its cinematic visuals. While it might sound superficial, the look and feel of the Order is powerful enough to be worth a playthrough on its own. Textures, lighting, facial animation, particles, cloth, and so on are all impeccable, raising the bar in a way that we've been waiting for since the start of this generation. And in our playthrough, we only came across a single minor bug. The only nagging flaw is that our character apparently doesn't reflect in mirrors. Yet, it's not just about the fidelity of the graphics, it's about the intricate craftwork and design of these spaces. Fine details bring each character and location to life, taking you on an interesting visual journey as you explore the round table of the council chamber, eerie underground passageways, and the marvels of the airship Agamemnon. Some locations are even littered with props like brass pots or ceramic jars swinging and shattering in the midst of gunfights. Meanwhile, the melancholy string-driven score anchors the mood and is wisely implemented with the dread of some scenes amplified by the lack of any music whatsoever. There's a solid sense of place, and we just wish that we could explore more of it. Is there a single woman in this city you won't try to seduce? Well, he's your problem now. Do try not to lag behind. In the end, The Order 1886 is truly an exciting spectacle and a setting that we thoroughly enjoy, elevating our expectations for PlayStation 4 games to come. However, it's held back by its limited scope and abbreviated plot. It may not have the most well-rounded strengths, but it's a remarkable game nonetheless. Do you trust anyone, Mon General? Never accept, always question. It's a motto that's seen me through the centuries.